In Milltown, Texas, a woman rides on her horse through lush green fields, leading another one without a rider along, while at the same time, a handsome man records a song, singing and playing his guitar. Now in Los Angeles, former country singer and current rock star Bradley Suttons is at the peak of his career. After recently winning a Grammy, Bradley is being celebrated and interviewed alongside his fiancée, Catherine Mann, on national television. Catherine is a famous movie star, who had practically discovered Bradley when she first heard him singing in a bar in Nashville though she refuses to take credit and praises Bradley's talent for his success. On the other side of the country, Sarah enters her house and sees Bradley on TV, where she hears of his engagement to Catherine Mann for the first time. Sarah, being an old friend of Bradley, feels happy for him. She congratulates him, talking to herself and recalling him by his childhood nickname, Bradbird. A man named James enters Sarah's house and she greets him politely. James is the president of the local bank. He is here because Sarah has been avoiding his phone calls and emails. As the man tries to get to the point, Sarah tries her mighty best to deflect, but James eventually warns her about the limited time she has to make her mortgage payments. If she doesn't meet the deadline, he will have to sell off her ranch. Sarah tells him that she has been waiting to hear from someone who could fund her ranch and needs more time. While James has already given her six months of leverage, he agrees to give her another month to get her finances in order before he is forced to take the ultimate step. They shake on it and seal the deal. When James notices the man on TV, he recognizes him as someone who grew up in Milltown. Sarah informs him that he is Bradley Suttons who used to reside next door till he was 13. James recalls that Bradley's parents both passed away in a terrible car crash. He wonders if Sarah knew the man well and she laughs, saying that she was married to him. Later that night, Sarah takes out a box of her old stuff and finds a ring inside a pouch. She goes a few years down memory lane and recalls the day of Bradley's parents' funeral. They were in her family's barn, and Bradley was upset about moving away from home now that he had no family left. He was crying because he felt alone, and a young Sarah tried to console him. Their other friend, Adam, came looking for them when Sarah had an idea, and suggested that Bradley should marry her, and then she will be his family. A shocked Bradley reminded her that they were only 13 and ineligible to get married. But Sarah was not worried about the rules. They were in her barn and she made the rules there. Adam, whose father was a pastor, stepped in to help them get married. Back to the present, Sarah smiles to herself as she admires the ring. She then starts to write a nostalgic letter, addressing it to Brad Bird. In Los Angeles, Catherine's publicist insists that Bradley and Catherine have a big wedding with media and celebrities, but Bradley refuses the prospect. He only wants a small intimate wedding and Catherine agrees. The publicist insists that they should share their wedding with their fans, speaking of which, she tells Bradley about the fan mail that arrived for him. Bradley is just about to miss the letter when Catherine spots something inside the package. She opens it and finds a diamond ring inside it. It's not until she reads the letter to him and he hears the name Brad Bird that he remembers about Sarah. He tells Catherine about the girl who was his wife when he was 13 years old and fondly remembers how Sarah helped him feel less alone in a world without his parents. He also recalls that the ring is his mother's. While talking about Sarah, Bradley is reminded of his life back then and remembers that he still owns his parents' house. He decides to get that settled once and for all, and invites Catherine to come with him and visit his childhood home. But much to their dismay, Catherine's schedule is jam-packed. She really wishes to see the place where Bradley grew up and so she asks him to first take care of selling the house, and then after they get married, she will visit his hometown. After Bradley leaves the room, Catherine's publicist expresses her dismay about their plans for a small wedding in Italy. But Catherine assures her that she has a plan of her own. Bradley finally arrives in Milltown and heads straight to the bank first. He talks to James about putting the house up for sale and gets the procedure started. When James tries to talk to Bradley about how sad his parents' passing was, Bradley brushes over the topic abruptly and leaves from there. Bradley is in the cab when he realizes he never gave the driver his address, yet he knew where to bring him. The driver turns out to be a guy Bradley used to go to school with, Sam Hartford. Since Bradley is pretty famous in Milltown, everybody knows where he resides. So much so, that they even have a sandwich named after him at the diner. Bradley arrives home, feeling sadly nostalgic. He goes around the house, dusting off the cobwebs around old memories that leave him with a bittersweet feeling. Bradley decides to pay a visit to his next-door neighbors, and there, he finally meets Sarah. Sarah is tending to the horses when Bradley approaches her. She is completely surprised to see him in town, and recalls that Bradley once said in an interview that he would return to Milltown when pigs start to fly. The two exchange laughs and take playful jabs at each other. Bradley tells her about his purpose for returning home. Sarah earnestly lets him know that everyone is really proud of everything that Bradley has achieved. They catch up with each other as the two walk back to the stables, and Sarah tells him that she has been tending to his mother's flower garden all these years. Bradley thanks her for her generosity but Sarah feels that this is the least she could have done for the woman, since she was the one who taught her all about gardening. 
That is how Sarah became the town's flower supplier. Bradley asks about her family still raising race horses, but Sarah informs him that her family moved to Florida years ago, and her ranch is a horse rescue shelter. People give her their older sick horses and she takes care of them. Bradley wonders, with a little bit of judgment, why Sarah stayed back in Milltown. He asks if she is ever married or has kids but Sarah never did. She became a vet and then got busy with the ranch, and forgot about ever getting married or having kids. Bradley jokes that he had the right sense to marry her when he did, and Sarah laughs at that. She asks him about Catherine and expresses her desire to meet the woman because she is a fan, but Bradley informs her that he came alone. He only wants to get his work done and leave without any fuss. But that is impossible when Bradley Suttons is in town. Sarah shows confused Bradley the group of people gathered outside his house to see him. She helps the scared man get out of there unnoticed and leads him to her barn and the two ride away on her horses. It takes him a while, but Bradley finally gets the hang of riding a horse after all these years, and the two jet away from the cameras and crowd. Sarah brings Bradley to their old hangout spot, a fort they built when they were kids. They reminisce about the simpler times when the two of them, along with Adam, made some great memories in this fort. Sarah tells him that is the reason she stayed in town, for the simpler times. Before parting ways for the day, Bradley asks Sarah out to lunch so they could catch up a bit more, but Sarah's got some fences to mend that keep her lunch hours occupied. Bradley also has to write a new album, but he reckons they could take out an hour to catch up. Sarah agrees to it and asks him to meet her at 10 a.m. the next day. They will go get Adam and then get some lunch. They part ways, and Sarah checks her mailbox for the letter, but much to her dismay, it's not there. Later that night, Bradley sits out on the porch of his house and sings a song. Sarah hears him play and sings along to the lyrics, smiling to herself. The next day, Bradley and Sarah arrive at the church where Adam is a pastor. Adam is pleasantly surprised to see Bradley and after the meeting is over, Bradley suggests they go get some sushi. Sarah and Adam bring Bradley fishing at the creek, which was not at all what he had in mind. Bradley had blocked so much of his childhood years that he nearly forgot about coming to the creek after church on Sundays. The quietness around them reminds him of the mindful awareness classes that he and Catherine take. It sounds to Sarah awfully like Bradley pays a big sum to just sit still and be quiet. That cracks up Adam and her, as they make fun of poor Bradley. Coming back home, Sarah asks Bradley about Catherine, wanting to know what the famous star is like in real life. Bradley praises his fiancé for being funny and smart. He wonders if there is anyone like that for Sarah. She tells him not anymore, but there used to be a guy who turned out not to be the one. Sarah again checks for the letter in her mailbox and gets a little frustrated when she does not see it. Bradley thanks her for everything she has done so far, saying that he might soon leave town once his work is done. Sarah hugs him goodbye and wishes him the best with Catherine. Later that night, Bradley struggles with writing a song. He spends the next day obsessing over getting it right while Sarah gets back to her duties. Though she finds herself fondly stealing glances at Bradley's house whenever she can. That night, Bradley even sleeps with his old teddy bear. Meanwhile, Sarah has got a load of bills to pay and no funding at all. She keeps waiting for the funding to pull through. The next day, Bradley is woken up by the real estate broker showing his house to potential buyers. Bradley decides to put the sale on hold as he wants to stay back a few more days. He lets Sarah know that he's staying and she's glad to have him around for a while longer. Later that day while Sarah's heading out for delivery, she stops by Bradley's place and invites him to fish with her the next morning. They meet the next morning and Bradley tells Sarah about his days on the road and how surreal it felt to wake up in new cities every day. Bradley tells Catherine about his time at his childhood home and how the songwriting has been flowing out of him so effortlessly. Meanwhile, Catherine is at her wedding dress fitting as she tells him she misses him. Bradley sighs, wishing that he could show Catherine his hometown and take her fishing in the creek. Catherine seems revolted to hear that but still feigns to be on board. She lets Bradley believe that they are going to have a small countryside wedding, with just the two of them being in love. Meanwhile, Catherine has something extravagant planned for their wedding. Bradley visits the barn where his wedding ceremony to Sarah was held and feels a wave of nostalgia hit him. In the memory, the two exchange vows as Adam marries them. He then puts his mother's ring on Sarah's finger, but when it comes time to kiss the bride, Bradley and Sarah both shy away. Back in the present, Sarah finds Bradley reminiscing in the barn. When she approaches him, Bradley excitedly declares that this barn is where he wants to get married. This stuns Sarah because she does not think Catherine Mann is the kind of woman who would want to get married in a barn but Bradley says that she does not know her as he does. In his opinion, having a wedding away from the spotlight and media is exactly what Catherine needs. Bradley makes Sarah an offer, he will help her mend her fence if she helps him plan his wedding. Sarah makes fun of Bradley and his soft man hands not capable of doing hard labor like a cowboy, but Bradley assures her that he is perfectly capable of it. Back in the city, Catherine is at a photo shoot when she puts her publicist worries to rest by telling her that she will not get married in a barn. While Catherine loves how Bradley is trying to give her a normal life, she has a plan of her own. She will marry him in his hometown in a small intimate gathering and then they will jet off to Italy for their one-of-a-kind, amazing wedding. 
It's Bradley's first day at work and Sarah offers to get him a change of clothes, lest his expensive branded clothes suffer the consequences of hard labor, but the man refuses. Hours later, Bradley's fashionable clothes perish and his limbs ache. The man regrets having made a deal with Sarah who can't help but laugh at his pitiful condition. But Bradley does not give up just yet. He digs through the old boxes and finds some working clothes of his father's. Bradley puts them on when he goes to mend the fences and Sarah finally gives him an earnest compliment. They get to work and later that night, Sarah fixes Bradley's hand when he hurts himself. The two share a sweet amiable conversation where Bradley feels the effects of Sarah's presence, but he cannot pin it down. The next day, Sarah takes Bradley to the diner and orders two Bradley Sutton sandwiches for them, which leads to a hilarious encounter with the waitress, who fails at recognizing that the rock star is right in front of her. Later, Bradley discusses with Sarah all the arrangements for the wedding and puts her in charge of the flowers. Sarah wonders what Catherine's favorite flowers are but does not know it either. That does strike Sarah as something odd. Then when they go cake tasting, Bradley can't tell what Catherine's favorite flavor or her favorite color is. Sarah is a little appalled to find that out. The shop owner, Monica, is a big fan of Bradley and Catherine and so when Bradley picks the coconut flavor for his wedding, Monica reminds him that Catherine is allergic to coconut, which is news to Bradley. Meanwhile, Catherine has already chosen a cake for their wedding. Sarah faces another roadblock on her way to acquiring a grant so that she can keep the ranch up and running. And the failure leaves her feeling frustrated and stressed. While they are working on the ranch, Bradley asks Sarah if she likes living alone on the ranch. Sarah does not think she's alone. She has got her horses and her dogs but that is not what Bradley meant. Sarah tells him that she dreams to one day find what her parents have, true love. It does not come along every day and Sarah won't settle for less. Bradley does not think someone can just simply find a person they care about and like to be with, and with whom they share similar interests. Soon after all that, comes the hard work and compromises. Sarah tells him that she wants someone who will love her no matter what. Someone who wants to walk through life leaning up against her so neither of them will ever fall. Bradley brushes that away because while that is romantic, it is not very realistic. He laughs at her notion of a magical relationship that will only ever happen once in a lifetime and mocks her for having read too many romance novels. But still, Bradley earnestly wishes that she gets the happily ever after she wants because she deserves it. And then Bradley and Sarah get to work on cleaning the barn. They have so much fun while at it, as they spray water on each other and play games, laughing and giggling the entire time. Later that night, the two get out in the woods and have a little bonfire by the creek. Sarah makes Bradley lie next to her and they stargaze together. While they are talking, Sarah compliments Bradley's songwriting. She hears him sing every night and they remind her of the soulful songs Bradley used to write when he first started out, the ones that make you feel something. Bradley asks her if she really means what she said which surprises Sarah. He tells her that in the world where he resides, people usually only tell him what he wants to hear and never the truth. Sarah vows to never do that. The next day, they go out again. While talking to each other, Sarah finds out that Bradley has never talked to Catherine about having kids and starting a family together. It surprises her again that Bradley has not even discussed this with Catherine and he's planning their wedding. After getting some ice cream, the two of them head to get Bradley a wedding tux. When Bradley tries on his clothes, he feels like something is missing and that is when Sarah finds him a cowboy hat to complete his look. Bradley definitely likes that better. The saleswoman approaches Sarah, thinking that she is the bride, and insists that Sarah has to try on her wedding dress as well. Unable to get a word in edgewise, Sarah goes along with her. Soon, she comes out wearing a beautiful wedding dress, looking radiant as ever. She captivates Bradley's attention, and he is wowed by her beauty. He thinks that she looks like a princess. Sarah admires herself in the mirror and falls in love with the dress, deciding that if she ever gets married, that is the dress she will wear. Later, while at church, Bradley captivates the attention of everyone there and so no one pays heed to anything that Adam says. Sarah takes pity on the guy and makes an announcement, inviting everyone to Bradley's wedding if only they focused on Pastor Adam and his beautiful sermons. While Sarah's strategy gets everyone to focus on Adam, Bradley can't believe that she just invited strangers to his wedding. But Sarah reminds him that they are not strangers but people who knew him before he was a big star, and that they all wish him well. After church, the trio goes fishing. Adam expresses how coming home seems to have been healing for Bradley and Bradley agrees. Adam also looks forward to meeting Catherine at Bradley's wedding and thinks that Bradley must love the woman very much. Bradley agrees that he does, but there is a grim expression on Sarah's face as she tries to hide her emotions. Just as Bradley catches a big fish, he excitedly lifts Sarah off the ground, both celebrating his win. But as Adam sees the two together, something feels off. While working on the ranch, Sarah compliments Bradley for being a fast learner. He credits his father's cowboy jeans for his skills. He feels much closer to his roots now than he ever did and for the first time in years, being in that place, with Sarah, feels like home to him. He even feels grateful to her for helping him find his way back to who he was. Something about his words makes Sarah feel a little different and she changes the topic, inviting Bradley to check out a band for his wedding. Bradley and Sarah head into town to check out the band. 
They meet with Adam at the bar, and then as the band starts playing romantic music, Bradley asks Sarah to dance. They dance with each other. Bradley keeps Sarah entertained with his epic dance moves. Adam, who is watching from afar, can't help but notice the chemistry between the two. While dancing, Bradley and Sarah get closer and he kisses her. The song stops and awkwardness settles between the two. But before they can talk, Bradley gets called onto the stage to perform a song. As Sarah watches Bradley perform, she can't help but feel a little sad, and there's a heaviness in her chest. But it is not until Adam talks to her about it that Sarah realizes that she's falling in love with Bradley, who is already spoken for. She is on the verge of crying as she is forced to face the reality that Bradley will soon be leaving. Adam worries for her because he cares about his friend and does not want her to get hurt. But it's too late for that now, Sarah has already fallen for Bradley. Unable to control her emotions, Sarah leaves the bar and returns home. The next day, when someone knocks on his door, Bradley thinks it is Sarah. He is a little disappointed to see James there. The man comes bearing good news, there is a solid offer on Bradley's house and the buyers are ready to move in right away. But now Bradley has decided to stay back and keep the house, wanting to hold on to his roots. James is happy to hear that news and wishes that Bradley could talk some sense into his neighbor as well, or else she will lose her ranch. Bradley then finds out about her funding situation and how she can't make bills, because people who leave their old horses with her never pay her to take care of them. When he goes looking for Sarah, Bradley finds her tending to her garden. Sarah makes an excuse for leaving without a word the night before, and tries to keep the conversation short, asking Bradley to even take the day off from working on the fence. She seems to want to avoid him, but Bradley, having learned what he did from James, offers to pay Sarah for taking care of his mother's garden all these years. Sarah quickly understands what Bradley is trying to do and refuses to take his money. She lies to him, saying that her funding finally came through and that she will be just fine so Bradley has no reason to worry about her anymore. Though he does not seem convinced, Bradley agrees to leave her be. Back in Los Angeles, Catherine finds out, through the newspapers, that Bradley has been closely hanging out with his childhood friend, and seeing that Sarah aged so well is cause for concern. Her publicist insists that Catherine has to go to Texas ASAP. Sarah keeps herself busy all day and Bradley finally catches on. He confronts her about it but Sarah brushes his concern away and tries to leave for her delivery when Bradley tells her that he has decided to keep his house. That gets her attention and Sarah asks him why he did that. It's because Bradley finally realized that this is his home and she helped him realize it. Sarah asks him if he thinks his superstar wife would want to reside in a place like that, and Bradley does not think Catherine will have a problem with it. Disappointed in his answer, Sarah walks away. Bradley stops her, asking what's going on with her, and then, consumed by a wave of emotion, Sarah blurts out the truth to him. She thinks that Bradley is marrying a woman he barely even knows. Not her favorite color or her favorite flowers or the fact that she even wants a family one day. He knows nothing. Sarah can't understand why Bradley is even planning their wedding without her, and why is it that she is the one making all the decisions that Catherine should be making. Bradley tries to tell her that it is because Catherine's busy shooting but it's not a good enough reason. Sarah has reached her tolerance and is on the verge of tears as she decides to shoot straight for the truth. She lets Bradley know that he can't marry Catherine because he does not love her, but Bradley is still in denial. Sarah asks him why he kissed her, but Bradley's response breaks her heart even more, as he apologizes for it, saying that he got caught up in the music and the moment. Sarah is disappointed to hear that and tries to tell Bradley that she understands why he is afraid to love again. He was deeply hurt as a child after losing his parents and now he is scared to love like that again. She tries to reason with him. She gets emotional as she tells him that he can't marry Catherine, just because they have similar lives and like the same things. People should only get married because they love the other person and can't stand the thought of being apart from each other. But Bradley still refuses to accept that. He thinks that what Sarah just said is all fantasy and nothing else. But even if it is, Sarah does not think that he should settle for anything less. Bradley indignantly tells her that just because she knew him as a kid does not mean that she knows him now. Realizing that she can't get Bradley to understand, Sarah accepts defeat and storms off. As days pass, Bradley gets to reflect and he decides to talk to Catherine about some stuff. He leaves her a message, but much to his surprise, Catherine shows up at his doorstep. She wonders why Bradley still has not sold off the place when he tells her that he decided to keep it. The news takes Catherine by shock. As she assesses Bradley's outfit, the man tells her that he's learned so much about himself in the past few weeks, and he wants to keep this house as a home base for when the two of them get off from work, and can spend time with their kids. Catherine is surprised to hear Bradley talk about children and tries to brush away his concerns, by saying that once they are married, they will have a lifetime to learn everything about each other, and that she also wants what he wants. She suggests that they go out to a restaurant and celebrate when Bradley informs her that there are no restaurants in town, just a diner. She looks so worried when Bradley tells her that people usually eat food at home. 
He pacifies her and assures her that everything will be fine and suggests taking her on a hike one day, and then fishing the next day. Catherine believes as long as they are together, everything will be perfect. The next day, Bradley takes her to the creek and she asks about Sarah. Bradley talks highly of her and tells Catherine about Sarah's problem with the ranch. Meanwhile, Catherine gets a call and Bradley finds out that she has ordered a few things for their wedding. He assures her that he has taken care of everything, but Catherine just wants to make sure everything is perfect. After their little barn wedding, they can go to Italy and finally return to their real lives. When they actually get to fishing, Catherine has a hard time getting the hang of it. She almost drowns and Bradley rescues her. Sarah finally receives the letter she had been waiting for, but sadly the response is not in her favor. The next day, Catherine visits Sarah at her ranch and Sarah is thrilled to see her there. Catherine praises Sarah for the work she is doing and realizes why Bradley loves it here so much. But she brushes his wish to settle down in Milltown away, saying that he will eventually forget about this place when he is back on tour. Catherine thinks that Bradley has a gift and that is meant to be shared with the world. While Sarah believes that as well, she finds Catherine's words a little odd but before she can say something, Catherine tells Sarah about her friend who takes in animals, who have retired from working in the films. The man would love to help Sarah out by taking in her animals as well, and he can even offer Sarah a job on his ranch in California if she's up for it. Sarah is so relieved to hear this and so grateful to Catherine for her help. Catherine rushes her to take the opportunity if she can, and though Sarah feels a little pressured, she is also grateful for Catherine's generosity. Then, as a token of appreciation for helping Bradley put their wedding together, Catherine gifts Sarah with a flight ticket to California. She has to leave the next morning and will be missing the wedding, but Catherine supposes that is not as important as saving her horses. Sarah agrees with that and thanks her for everything. As Catherine leaves, Sarah asks her what her favorite flowers are and finds out that they're yellow roses. Sarah feels so relieved now that she can save her horses. Bradley calls Adam to meet him in their childhood hangout spot. Bradley wonders, asking his pastor friend, what people look like when they are in love. He wonders how they know that they've found the person they want to spend the rest of their lives with. Adam tells him that when the bride walks down the aisle, there's a certain look in her eyes as she looks at the groom, like she is lost in the moment. That look says it all. Bradley seems unconvinced by that, so Adam asks him the real question, does he love her? And though Bradley says that he does love Catherine, he does not look too convinced, and neither does Adam. But Bradley is still in denial about his true feelings that he cannot recognize. Sarah prepares the Yellow Roses bouquets for Bradley's wedding. At the wedding rehearsal, when Catherine is walking down the aisle toward him, Bradley's focus shifts to Sarah who suddenly appears behind her. Sarah walks out of there in tears, seeing as she's leaving town. The next day, with a heavy heart, she hands over her home to the bank and leaves for California. When Bradley goes looking for Sarah, he can't get a hold of her. Bradley is stunned when he finds out from the real estate agent that Sarah does not reside here anymore, and that the bank had to sell the ranch because Sarah could not pay her mortgage. He is even more astonished when she tells him that it is he who has bought the ranch. Bradley immediately finds Catherine, who is getting ready for their big day. He confronts her about buying Sarah's ranch, and Catherine tells him that she only bought it so the two of them can expand their property, and one day build a new house here, one that people like them can reside in. Bradley can't understand what she means by that. Just then, a cameraman enters the room and starts snapping pictures of them, which makes Bradley even more annoyed. He finds out that Catherine was the one who invited him to capture their wedding for People magazine. Bradley gets mad at her for going against his wish to keep their wedding private. Catherine changes the topic, telling him how happy she is with the floral arrangement, and wonders how he knew that yellow roses were her favorite. But Bradley realizes that must be Sarah's work. He decides, right then and there, that he cannot get married to Catherine. His behavior upsets Catherine but Bradley has decided that he won't tour for a while. He'll reside in Milltown, perform locally, and write songs. Catherine does not agree to that, not when Bradley's career is on fire, but Bradley has made up his mind. He tells her that though he cares about her very much, it just is not enough. Bradley walks out, leaving a heartbroken Catherine behind. When Sarah finally returns home to pack up her stuff, she is greeted by her dogs who then lead her out to the barn. When Sarah opens the door, she finds the townspeople just gathered inside and then Bradley walks up to her. She wonders what is going on and asks him about Catherine. And that is when Bradley suggests that the two of them should renew their wedding vows. Sarah is completely stunned to hear this from him. Bradley goes on to say that they first had their chance at true love when they got married as kids. And while that may be romantic and not realistic, he does not want to give up this rare thing they have and settle for something less. Sarah's true happiness shows on her face as she smiles radiantly, trying to control herself from crying. Bradley lists all her favorite things, letting her know that while he didn't know much about Catherine, he knows everything about her. He declares his love to her, and tells her that he wants to walk through life leaning against her, so that neither one of them falls. She is his true love. Sarah is in tears when Bradley goes down on one knee and proposes to her with his mother's ring. Sarah says yes. They celebrate with their loved ones. In a beautiful ceremony, Pastor Adam once again officiates Sarah and Bradley's wedding, as they promise each other a lifetime of happiness and love.